We've all seen them, many of you have them. I wanna talk about the four by eight layout and its influence on model railroading, on coffee and trains. Welcome everybody to another edition of Coffee and Trains. Before we begin, as always, I am drinking Starbucks Sumatra coffee and I'm taking it with black with two sugars. So today you probably looked at your title of the video if you popped up on the notification or if you just scrolled through this and you thought, what's Jimmy talking about here? And I thought that the 4x8 was a pretty straightforward thing. And for the most part, it is. But I want to talk about the 4x8's influence on the hobby, why it's such a common size for model railroads, and some negatives that can come into it in terms of being creative with your model railroad. So let's go ahead and dive right into that. Okay, so first, the positives. The 4x8 is one of the most common layout sizes that there is. I think the only one that would maybe come close to rivaling it is the in-scale door layout, but even then, that's nowhere near as common as the 4x8. And the real reason for that, at least in the States, is if you go to any of your home improvement stores like Home Depot or Lowe's that have a lumber yard, the most common size of board, whether it's plywood, whether it's OSB, whether it's MDF, any of those, the most common size you're gonna find is four feet by eight feet. That way it's really easy to just buy that, bring it home. You can even rent a truck at these places. Sometimes if you can't put it in your vehicle, buy that, bring it home, put it on a folding table, put your track on it and boom, instant train table. And it's big enough to do a lot of different things. It's not big enough to do some things with model railroading, but it's big enough to handle a lot of things, especially that beginners uh, really want to do. Now, the other reason that the 4x8 is really common in addition to those is that while it is a big piece of wood, it's just small enough to where you can maneuver in a house and get it into a spare bedroom, and it's gonna fit in most spare bedrooms. So it's a really easy way to get a layout that fits with minimal construction, as I said, folding table, track on it. It's a really easy way to get that into a spare bedroom and it's gonna fit in most spare bedrooms. I know there's a few people that probably have really small bedrooms, especially city dwellers, but if you have a spare bedroom, the smallest bedroom I've ever had is 10 feet by nine feet and you're going to be able to get a four by eight sheet in that. So those are two reasons why the four by eight is so common, but let's talk about why it's so easy to make a layout on a four by eight, especially when it comes to certain scales. Now, manufacturers have acknowledged the fact that the 4x8 is the most common size of model railroad, and you can see that in some of their track radii and their designs. So let's go with HO scale, two of the most common sizes for track radii in HO scale are 18 and 22 inches, and those are designed to fit on a 4x8 sheet easily. And then when you look at locomotives, a lot of HO scale locomotives have a minimum radius of 22 or 18 inches. Steamers tend to lean more towards 22 inches and diesels can actually go down to as far as 18 inches and even down into 15 inches, which will even more easily fit. But that's really smaller diesels right there. So the vast majority of products in HO scale are designed to run on a four by eight layout with the proper radii. And then when you get into O scale, you see a lot more articulated locomotives where the parts are designed to fit on tighter radii so that you can get some tight radii onto a four by eight and be able to run O scale. That's why you see so many O scale four by eight layouts. That's how they're set up so that you can run them on a four by eight because that was the original. A lot of us remember that O scale and S scale were some of the original scales and those are both still designed to be able to run efficiently on a four by eight sheet. So that's how the model railroad manufacturers have acknowledged the fact that the four by eight is so common and that's why it makes it so easy for people to design and build a railroad on a four by eight. Now, as great as the four by eight size is, there are some drawbacks to it. And there are some that I can name easily where you can't run long trains in certain scales. Uh, you can't fit huge scenery on it, but you guys know that. And the one that I really wanna talk about is the creativity when it comes to track plans. Now, first of all, you can find more four by eight track plans than probably any other track plan that is out there for most scales, as a matter of fact. All you have to do is do a quick search of Google and you can find them there everywhere. There's hundreds, if not 
thousands of 4x8 track plans. And people have done a lot of creative things with the 4x8. But the 4x8 sheet is something that can actually limit your creativity when it comes to designing your model railroad. And I'll give you a couple reasons for that. Number one is that when you see a 4x8, the immediate thing that you think of more than likely is to put a loop of track down and build around it. And this can actually be a hindrance, especially if you're looking to do prototype model railroading. And number two is you're not gonna be able to fit some industries. You're gonna to have to do a lot of compression to get some industries in, and you may be limited to smaller industries or doing a single large industry without some serious creative thinking in terms of the four by eight. Now, some ways that you can break out of this is the easiest way that I can think of is to cut a four by eight sheet into four two foot by four foot sections so you can arrange them into an L, a U, an S, a line. You can do a lot of things by rearranging the square footage of the four by eight. A great example of this, if you've ever seen it, is the Model Railroad or Project Railroad, the Beer Line. It's one of my favorite project railroads that they have ever done. And it has four sections and they're all very easily able to be rearranged into straights, an L shape, a J shape, a U shape, those kind of things. So if you haven't checked that out before, go ahead and go check that out. It's really, really cool. I'll actually put a link to it in the description below. But overall, the 4x8 is a fantastic size and blank slate for model railroading, but it can be something that can hinder your creativity and your desires for a track plan. So don't be afraid to break up that square footage of that 4x8 so that you can get exactly what you want. Don't be afraid to do modules. Don't be afraid to cut it up and put it along a wall. Don't be afraid to do any of that kind of stuff. Just remember the four by eight is the raw material and it's what you do with it. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna talk about a four by eight. That's more talking about a four by eight than I thought I would ever do in my entire life. So I'm, I'm done, but I do wanna to get to some of your comments talking about your coffees that you're drinking. So Carolina Foothills Railroad D Knight is drinking donut shop coffee with caramel macchiato. That sounds delicious. Michael Fister is drinking a local roast. Shout out to Rooster's Crow. Definitely one to put on my list. SP and 53 Daylight and Overnight is drinking Starbucks Verona made extra strong with lots of sugar and caramel macchiato creamer. I'm drinking Starbucks right now, buddy. Let's see here. Needs to quit is a Starbucks whole bean espresso man. Now the Starbucks man, say what you want about them. They make some really, really good coffee. And last but not least, uh, Steve's Trains. If you haven't checked out his channel, it's absolutely phenomenal, the stuff that he does. He builds a lot of micro layouts. He uses Kato Unitrack for these. And it's just absolutely amazing what he's done. He's built in both N and HO scale. So go check him out. I'll put a link in the description below. Steve drinks Green Mountain Coffee Roasters breakfast blend out of his Keurig. I do love Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. I love their caramel vanilla cream. So thanks for that, Steve. So that is it. I want to hear from you guys on this. This is definitely more of a social type video rather than an instructional video. So tell me what kind of coffees you're drinking. Tell me what you think of the 4x8. If you have a 4x8, you can also email me your pictures. I've got an email in the description below. Who knows? I may show some of them off because you guys build some great railroads. So thank you guys so much for watching. I want to say a big thank you to all of my patrons. They are listed right here. They help me get together a lot of the topics for coffee and trains. So thank you guys so much. You can become a member of my Patreon community for as little as $1 a month. Also, I'm coming out with some cool coffee and trains merchandise, some fun little stuff I'm putting up on my Teespring store. You can check that out. I've got t-shirts, I've got hoodies, and of course, I've got coffee mugs. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, drink some coffee, and happy railroading.